There's no two ways about it. Space is trying to kill you. Between the no breathable air, radiation, and rocks hurtling around everywhere, space is a human hazard. Yet we continue to push the boundaries and explore this perilous place. And it's miraculous that in more than 50 years of human spaceflight, only three men have died in space. So the caveat here is that it all depends on how you define space. If we want to get technical, space starts at the Kármán line, an imaginary line 62 miles above the planet, because we need some way to determine what's space and what isn't. By that formal definition, most of the fatalities in spaceflight haven't happened in space. On January 28, 1986, a faulty seal in a booster rocket led the Space Shuttle Challenger to explode 73 seconds after launch, when it was just 9 miles above the planet. Seven astronauts were killed, though the accident investigation suggests it was actually the impact upon hitting the ocean that killed them, not the explosion. On February 1, 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated over Texas during re-entry, 38 miles above the ground. Another seven astronauts were killed. On April 24, 1967, the parachute on the Soyuz 1 flight failed to open and Vladimir Komarov was killed on impact, so on the ground. On the commercial side of things, pilot error led to the breakup of Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 on October 31st of 2014. It was during a test and one pilot was killed. It's not clear where exactly he died, but it was somewhere between the 50,000 foot mark where the spacecraft broke apart and the ground. But either way, still well below the Kármán line. However, three men have died in space, albeit during re-entry, not in orbit on a mission. The crew of Soyuz 11 was killed on June 30, 1971, above the Kármán line. This happened when a valve opened at the top of the descent module, letting the pressurized atmosphere escape. The open valve exposed them to the vacuum of space, killing the crew in under a minute. The spacecraft, meanwhile, executed a flawless automatic landing. The crew was found unresponsive with blue patches on their faces and blood dripping from their noses and ears, and one was even still warm to the touch. But aside from those three cosmonauts, no one else has died in space in 40 years. So how is that possible? Well, with really good technology and understanding of space hazards. The basic necessities, food, water and air, are either replenished by resupply missions or recycled by the International Space Station's onboard facilities. The station and the spacecraft that fly to it are all built with adequate shielding to keep crews safe from small impacts. Lightweight shields, called multi-shot, can cushion the blow of impacts. The ISS also orbits below the Van Allen belt, so it does have some natural radiation protection. If something did happen, the ISS's modularity offers a lot of protection. Essential systems can be commanded from the ground, so crews can take care of themselves. There are even external locks and docking ports, meaning that unmanned vehicles can dock with the station or depart under Houston's ground control. And of course, there are alarms and systems in place to warn astronauts of any problems and flight controllers keeping an eye on everything from the ground. Of course, redundancies and backups make these systems that much safer. Really, it's during launch and landing that the astronauts are the most at risk, and there are systems in place for that too. Like the Apollo launches in the 1960s and 1970s, today's rockets, like the Soyuz, have launch escape systems on board. These emergency systems are basically small rockets on top of a spacecraft that can be triggered by an automatic emergency signal or by a ground controller. It fires, pulling the spacecraft away from, say, an exploding booster, giving it distance and a safe place to land. It's actually only been used once. In 1983, an escape rocket it pulled the crew of the Soyuz T-10-1 away from an explosion on the launch pad. So yes, space is dangerous, but scores of aeronautical engineers and mission planners all work together to ensure space missions run without a hitch. Thankfully, they're pretty good at not letting space kill us. But as missions go further into the depths of space, the risks will likely increase, and engineers and planners will have their work cut out for them. And speaking of close calls in space, how long did it take the crew of Apollo 13 to realize they were definitely not landing on the moon? I've got the full story over here on Vintage Space. Who out there would go into space even though it's super dangerous? Let us know in the comments, give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode of Seeker.